Jen and Mark would never forget the day when they were woken up at five in the morning by a strange otherworldly piece of deep dramatic music just blurting out of the sky all of a sudden. The first thing they did was jump in shock out of their respective dream states, look at each other in a hazy eyed terror, and then they scrambled into their dressing gowns and went outside to have a look at what was happening. They weren't the only ones. All around the world, in all the different time zones, people were either being woken up in the middle of the night, interrupted during lunchtime conversations, kids sat in boring classes were snapping back to life as the sound rattled through the windows around them. Jen and Mark left the small rural house they'd moved into a few years ago to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, and just like everyone else on the planet, they stood staring up at the sky, bewildered, dazed, and wondering if they were dreaming. Up there, painted across the sky in an ethereal glowing font were the following words. The Earth. No explanation, nothing, just two words somehow visible from all corners of the Earth and somehow legible in everyone's respective languages. Jen and Mark sat on the side of the road outside their house staring up at the words and trying to figure out what this was. Everyone else did pretty much the same thing. If you tuned into any TV or radio station that day, you'd hear everyone in the media talking endless garbage about it. Most of what was being said was being connected to religion. Maybe whichever god turned out to be the right one was about to reveal him or herself to the world. The world collectively held its breath, and then, without warning, the music suddenly came to an end. The text then began to ever so slightly inch itself upwards, and a new piece of music began to play. It was a piece that most people swore they'd definitely heard at least once in their lives, but no one could remember where it was from. The music was a lot more pleasant, and you could listen to it without getting a headache. The words floated upwards and started to fizzle out into the atmosphere, and then they disappeared forever. They were then followed by two smaller columns of floating words. These words weren't capitalised and were a lot harder to make out. Some people went to get binoculars so they could read them, but they found that if you looked directly at the words, when magnified, they burnt out your retinas. It didn't matter if they could read the words or not though, because upon further investigation and analysis, and being filtered correctly for public broadcast, the floating words were found to be nothing but indecipherable gibberish. There were no recognisable words or even letters at all, just indistinct scratches across the sky. Everyone stood around muttering to one another, and asking the same questions. What did this mean? Why was this here? What happens now? Where do we go? What do we do? At around the end of the day, well after everyone had gotten bored of standing around debating the meaning of the floating words, people then started to wonder whether this was even anything to worry about at all. People's frail elderly relatives went back inside to have a bit of a lie down, children started playing games with each other, and friends and family were now just chatting about their daily lives. Jen and Mark both still sat with their neighbours on the side of the road in their dressing gowns, but they then had phone calls from their respective workplaces. Both Jen and Mark's managers said that nothing was going to get done if everyone just sat around thinking about the words in the sky all day, and that Jen and Mark were both expected to be back at work tomorrow at 9am sharp. Jen and Mark didn't know what else they could do. They didn't have any excuse not to go back to work. Should they just sit here and watch the words go by until something else happened? What would that achieve if they did? So the adults went back to work, children went back to school, half the planet went back to sleep, and life carried on as normal for a very long time. The radio and TV wouldn't shut up about the still scrolling words of course. TV channels were established across all continents broadcasting in all countries that were entirely dedicated to the live streaming of and rolling news concerning the words in the sky. Jen and Mark would sometimes watch the UK's channel, Sky Words News, but it started getting a bit dull after a while because there was never anything new. The experts were still scratching their heads, the journalists were still saying nothing of consequence, the vox pops were useless. Everyone on screen was just as clueless as the rest of them. About six months down the line, life eventually just went back to normal. The continuing music just sort of faded into the background for most people. It became like the low humming of aeroplanes, birdsong or the neighbour's dog barking. You hardly noticed it after a while. 
Sure, it was annoying that people could only just about look up at the clouds in the sky without getting a searing pain in their eyes from the bright light of the scrolling text, but who has the time to just sit about and watch the clouds in the sky all day anyway, layabouts? The world governments couldn't be bothered to do anything about it. Sure, people complained about light pollution, but nowhere near enough people saw precisely what harm the words were doing to anybody. Doing anything about it would have been a waste of public money. I mean, yes, alright, the words lit up the night sky like a never-ending firework display, but if you can't sleep, then just buy a blindfold. Or just get thicker curtains, you cheapskates. Honestly, it's not that much of an inconvenience. So the gibberish carried on scrolling across the sky for years, and the years ended up becoming decades. Jen and Mark finally decided to get married and had two children in that time. They named their children Luke and Samantha, and Luke and Samantha grew up in a world where the scrolling words in the sky were just normal. They'd always been there, always would be there. There was nothing that they could do about it, and nothing was going to change. So Luke and Samantha grew up and went to school, Jen and Mark went to work, and life was generally good for everyone. There were occasional issues that got everyone thinking about the words in the sky again, but not for very long. Scientists had started to notice something strange about the scrolling words. They'd been keeping an ongoing transcript, and they found that as time had gone by, the gibberish scratches had started to resemble actual words. Most of the words appeared to be from long dead languages, but they couldn't quite be sure, and if they were, that was probably just a coincidence, right? The human mind tends to see patterns in things that aren't there, they see shapes in the clouds, and it was probably just a lot of worry over nothing. The amount of people that thought that there was anything to worry about was very few, until one day, about four decades after the words had first appeared in the sky, when everything changed. Samantha had gotten married and had two children of her own. She and her husband had gone up to visit Grandma and Grandpa, and there had been a sudden news flash interrupting a film the family had been watching together in the evening, while the burning words in the sky outside were still lazily scrolling on by. It was a bit of a shock, as breaking news always is. Had a war started? The newsreader's grave expression as the incidental music rang out said that it might be even worse than that. The writing in the sky, first identified as ancient Sumerian approximately five years ago, is now comprised of Tamil, ancient Egyptian, and Sanskrit, said the newsreader. A new theory among scientists is that the words we have been seeing all these years were the names of cavemen from the first 2.8 million years of human existence and we're now beginning to see the credits of dead civilizations. The newsreader trailed off. His face had gone a pale grey colour. He was visibly shaking, and appeared barely able to make it through the broadcast. They are beginning to believe that what we are seeing are the end credits of mankind. Households around the world sat in stunned silence for a while. Nobody was quite sure how to react to that. Eventually, Jen, Mark, Samantha and their grandchildren all got up and headed for the door. They stepped out into the word-lit evening and gazed up, careful to shield their eyes from the bright light of the still-moving text. All of them were now thinking the same thing. Is this really happening? When am I going to see my own name, or the name of someone I recognise? More questions followed, and those questions were batted back and forth through everyone's minds and all of the news channels in the months that followed. Are famous people going to have more prominence than non-famous people? Should I buy one of those adapted pairs of binoculars and spot the famous ones like Genghis Khan, Alexander the Great, Jesus, or when it gets even further down the line, John F. Kennedy, Elvis and Martin Luther King? However, the questions then moved away from the writing in the sky and onto why the birth rate had dropped. It had been going on for many years, and most people had ignored it. Statistics showed that a higher number of couples had just sort of decided on their own to not have children for whatever reason. They wanted to live their lives first. It'd be too much hassle. Maybe they'd get round to it later, if they could be bothered. Births were still going on, but infertility was on the rise as well, and doctors were struggling to explain it. Couples in a perfect bill of health would find that no matter how many times they had sex, the test would always come back negative. The global birth rate just kept getting lower and lower across the world, and last year had seen the lowest recorded figures for centuries. Until now, it had only ever been a mildly eyebrow-raising set of statistics. The type of story that the papers and news channels would jabber about incessantly, but ordinary people didn't really pay much attention to because they had their own lives to lead. 
It was only now that people were starting to connect it to the writing in the sky. The connection was only an arbitrary one, but a theory going around was that maybe the world was being prepared for the last line in the end credits of mankind. Everyone did still get on with their daily lives, but it wasn't like it was before. This time everyone was tense and on edge, certain that the words in the sky meant something now. How much time did they have left? How long would a dead language last? Ancient Sumerian had vanished from the text a long time ago, and now it was pretty much nothing but Aramaic. Grandma Jen and Grandpa Mark had a bit of a falling out with Samantha one day when she came to visit with the kids. Samantha had been a bit angry at them for quite a while now. She kept asking them about the words in the sky. What had been going through their heads when they first saw them? Just what the hell did they think two columns of scrolling text in the sky were? Wasn't it obvious that something really ominous was happening and that they should do something about it? Just why the hell hadn't anything been done? Why didn't the government fund research into it? Why didn't you both join pressure groups? Advocate for a solution? Just who the hell decided that everyone should just carry on with their lives in spite of the fact the end credits for the human race had been scrolling across the sky for decades? Jen and Mark didn't really have much of an answer, and they got a bit defensive about it. Well, why was it up to us? Why didn't anyone else sort it out? We always thought someone else would deal with it. How were we supposed to know, Samantha? Please, we just didn't understand. It was that day the news announced they'd spotted Jesus. It wouldn't be too long now. All of history being considered, the post-Jesus period of mankind was basically nothing. Of course, governments were talking about it again. There were summits, collaborations between superpowers, but no one came up with a strategy that worked. Sending shuttles up to examine the words hadn't done any good. They just floated through the words as if they weren't even there. No one could identify what they were made of. It was as if they didn't exist at all. All that the space stations orbiting the Earth could do was just watch the credits scrolling across the sky and vanishing into nothingness, just like down on Earth. They were all out of ideas. The writing was on the sky. Mark died a few months after Jesus appeared in the credits. Heart attack. He was a chain smoker for most of his life, ate a lot of fatty products and rarely exercised anymore. He was 78 years old. He and Samantha hadn't made their peace in the end, but strangely, that didn't seem to be all that tragic to Jen or to Samantha. Everyone was too preoccupied about what was going to happen when the credits reached the end to think about anything that was going on in their own lives. No babies had been born at all in the last year. Every man and woman on the planet had been made infertile somehow. Maybe the words were radioactive? Who knows? Who cares? All that mattered was the list of potential names was finite now. It was all going to come to an end eventually, and what would happen then? Would everyone left alive just suddenly drop dead? Would the world fade out of existence like at the end of a movie? Were the credits going to end by listing the production company? At least absolute proof of whether there was a god or not would be some small comfort in the Earth's final moments. After she got back from the hospital where she'd said her final goodbye, Jen sat on the side of the road where she and Mark had sat all those years ago, staring up at the writing in the sky and wondering what it all meant. His name would be scrolling up into the heavens soon, and then hers would soon follow. And as she stared up at the sky, Jen suddenly found in that moment that she wasn't worried about what would happen at the end of the credits anymore, because at least they'd be together. Jen and Mark would have peace where they were going. Everyone will have peace when the world ends. <laughs>